Hello everybody, OCD Mikey here, and uh, I am going to talk to you today about how to make your Magna Pan sing. Okay, so I've had Maggie's for the last 20 years. I've had, you know, everything from 20.1 to MMG, and in between, I'm pretty sure I've had every single model. Um, and um, I've tried a bunch of stuff with them. I love the Magna Pan, so I take it apart, just like everything I love. Um, so... What I want to show you here, this is this is what happens when you leave a 3.6 around my place. Or I mean a 3.7 I. Um, I had it a year, and then I just I pulled it apart. And it started out with the crossover, and then it went haywire. But this is what I ended up with, which is a Maggie 3.7 in, in, in a separate, more rigid baffle uh, with an added mid-range, because I don't like to share my woofer tweeter with a mid. So I, I put a 40-inch BG Radia mid-range ribbon tweeter, or I mean um, mid-range, uh, right off to the side there, and it's hanging on a hinge, so it can be angled and um, for, for Sonic to get it, you know, just right, wherever you want it. Um, so, if you look over here, okay, well, let me, I'll just show you quick over this way. Um, on the back of the panel, okay, and this is how I put it back together, um, I took and um, I removed all the crossover apparatus, the crazy fuse block thing stuff over here that I can't stand those fuse blocks. Um, and so now these go straight to the panel. They have foil on the back, so I have silver foil that goes straight to the panel from these binding posts. Now really, we don't need these two because that's the mid-range. Um, that's the regular Maggie mid-range, but it's there in case I want to use it for some reason or another. Um, and then there's how the, the other mid is, is just like this. Okay, and so I put on, I made this, which is, um, this is made out of steel. That's a steel um, strut channel brace. Um, this stuff can all be purchased at McMaster Car, like this in white powder coat. Uh, and it's it's just bolt up. I didn't have to really, I don't think I had to cut any of it. No, maybe I did. I can't remember if I had to cut these or not. Anyways, okay, so, um, okay, so, uh, and then... No, you, you, I think you, you can, you can have them fabricated with some, no, they they were actually the perfect size, as a matter of fact. Okay, so, anyways, and then this, these go all the way up, and what I did was, so, okay, the Magna Pan has, if you pull it all apart, you strip it down, it's sitting on an MDF baffle that's a black baffle, and it's CNC routed out, and then the panels go in, and they, they staple them, uh, to hold them in. That's like a, you would framing a picture, um, and so... I took the, um, this is the, the Maggie baffle, because I didn't want to have to see and see anything. I wanted to do it the, the, an easier way, so I left it in the MagnaPan baffle, took everything else out, and then I cut uh, a, a, out, of, out of plywood a second baffle, which is three-quarter inch thick ply. You can see right there, it's pre-finished ply, so it's nice, but I still did a finished coat on it. And, um, and you cut this out just with the, you know, um, around the, uh, the panels. So you can leave them mounted into the MDF, and then you just put this on the front of it. You, you, you lay this on the face of it, and then you run your carriage bolts through the same holes. Th these are existing MagnaPan holes where the screw came through this way to hold those styles on, you know, the, the, the wood on each side. So you take those off. You're going to have the holes. You just go through the piece of ply, and you're going to mark it and, and drill it, and then you come out the back, and you just put a nut and a, you know, a washer on it. Okay, furthermore, I put some aluminum C-channel. As you can see right here, it's polished. And, uh, and this uh, gives it an extra rigidity because um, now going this forward and back, it's much more rigid. It's, less, it's not going to flex at all. I mean, it doesn't flex whatsoever. Between that and this uh, steel uh, frame, it's like it doesn't, it doesn't move at all. And the reason is, see, like when Maggie's on their stock uh, 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 frame, if you push them like this, they're going to move. They're really easy to move, actually. And what that means is that um, when, when your speaker is, you know, when you're playing it, especially if you're playing it louder, it, it's, it's the sound, some of the energy is going into moving the panel. But when you make the panel rigid, that, that energy comes into the room as, as sound, and it's just much better. So this is how... How I roll with the Maggie's. It's not even fair to really call it a Maggie because it's so much more. And then, and then, um, uh, I have them actively crossed over, but this is, you can see down in here, here's the passive. So I made a passive crossover. Um, let's see if I can get the light a little bit, boot them like this. See, like that, maybe. Okay. Um, anyways, so here are, there's, there's two tweeters, or I mean, two, uh, 
crossovers here, you can see, and I used all highfalutin parts. Those are Jupiter caps. Um, you can see there's an M cap there. These are um, air quad, big Jupiter there. Um, the, the, the sweet resistors, these things here. Um, more Mundorf. Uh, these are um, Gertz uh, air core inductors that are foil air core inductors. Uh, you know, all just good parts. And then the um, those are pure silver um, bus bars that are going through. Uh, so, you know, like this right here. Uh, is a pure silver so um they're they're, they're sweet um they, they sound really good and um, those are the passives so if i want to just use one amplifier to drive them i can but the way i do it now is i'm using uh, a four-way it's kind of hard to see but down there a four-way active crossover and then i'm using one this is stereo amp so one two three four actually i'm not i'm, I, I'm only using one in this so one, two, three, because now these have four, which is a plate amp. Okay. I'll have to go into those a little bit later. That's a different story. But, um, so, okay. So the magna pans, okay. I love magna pans. I would not own a magna pan in stock form, period. They sound horrible in, in stock form. Um, if, if you're listening to your Maggie and it's stock, a hundred percent stock, you're hearing about maybe um, 60% of what that thing has to, sh to, to give you. And, um, the reason is because there's a little, um, idiot fuse on back. I call it for people that are going to be dum-dums and don't know how to, how to handle themselves around hi-fi and, 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 uh, and, and they want to do s things like touch their speaker cables together or, you know, who knows, just whatever you do that is, is, is a dummy move. It's to protect your, your, your ribbon tweeter, okay? So, first of all, the only one that it would even make a difference on the fuse, really, to protect would be the 3.7. Anything below the 3.7 has the quasi-ribbon deal. There's no way you're blowing that membrane, you know, um, through doing something stupid. I mean, you'd really have to do something stupid. Um, so, and what I'm, what I'm getting at is you don't need the damn fuse block that's on the back there, okay? And it looks like it's a, it's a, um, it's a square, kind of a, a metal uh, panel that has jumpers and it has some fuses. In fact, let's go out and step outside because I'm going to show you over here. I'll go show you what I'm talking about. It is freezing out here. My God, I'm telling you, it must be 30 some. Okay. So we're coming out to the shop. Here's where I do all my crazy stuff. Okay. We got, look, oh, I've got some of these. I don't know if anybody wants these. I've got some timpani. And this is what the fuse block looks like on the timpani. But these are timpani 1Ds. Um, I'm not going to put those. I'm not going to refurb them. So um, someone can buy them for me for 100 bucks, um, And that's a gimme. Um, I better offer it to my Hi-Fi tribe first. Um, they'll get first call. Um, if you're a Hi-Fi tribe member, you get you get first priority. Um, okay, so here we are. Um, whoa, whoa. Man, there we go. Had to straighten that out. Okay. Uh, okay, so here is... This is a magnet pan, typical. This is from my 3.7s, from those ones that you just saw in here. Okay, so this is what you're going to see on the back of your unit. Okay, and normally you will have, let's see if I can find them here. Uh, I don't think I have any readily at hand, but you will find these little horseshoe th things that go right there. And I think they're like, they're like nickel plated brass or whatever they are. They're just, you know, some sort of metal. And then there's fuses that go here, tweeter um, and one for the mid range. Uh, and then here is these jumpers are for the purpose of, well, one's for the input, you know, and then the others are to attenuate or you put a resistor in here to knock down the, the, the tweeter or whatever, make it, make it less. Um, in, in my whole, you know, life of playing with magna pans, I've never once had to attenuate the tweeter. It's never been too much. Um, if it's too much for you, it's not the tweeter, it's your gear. So, um, you don't need to worry about that, um, with these, um, but I will, I will tell you a little bit more. So what I, um, do is I take these, which I have made, um, and these are nice pure silver cylinders. Okay. And then I fill them with a, uh, vibration damping material that goes inside to keep them from vibrating. And then you get a kit that has these that are filled 
um, and you just put them, you click them right into here. Just like, whoop, see, not just like that, just like this. Okay, like, okay. Now you just you just bypass this fuse. This does not a fuse anymore, and it will not protect your tweeter. Um, it will sound ten times better, and it, and you're not going to blow your dang tweeter. Okay. Um, I suppose if you really tried hard, you would be able to. But in all the hundreds of these kits that I've sold, not one person has told has called back and said, "Man, it's totally uncool. I blew my tweeter, and it's not cool. And you owe me for a tweeter, whatever." You know, I mean, there's been not one person ever complained about it. Um, so knock on wood it'll stay that way but this part is in your own hands you're you're now voiding your warranty if you have a warranty on a magnapan first of all you don't need one okay because they don't need warranty i've never had one break um and second of all um uh you know if you blow a tweeter let's say for some reason you do they're 140 bucks you know so what the sound that you get from putting these in is so worth blowing a tweeter uh that it's not funny but you're not going to blow the tweeter. That's the bottom line. Again, I've sold hundreds and hundreds of these things, and I've never had one person say that they blew a tweeter because they put this thing in there. Okay. The next step is right here. Instead of using those brass, uh, let's see if I have an example. I don't think I do because I look over here. Mm. No. Nope, okay. Um, let's see here. No, 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 no. I've got more coming. I just, oh yeah, okay, let's see, maybe here. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so, um, okay, yeah, here we go. Okay. So here's what comes with the, this isn't exactly it. Okay, here's what comes with the, um, the actual MagnaPan is this thing. Okay, so this is what comes from the factory. God knows what it is. It's, it's nickel plated something or other that's not the best for Sonic. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go like this too, maybe. Okay, um, okay, and then what we do, or what, what, what um, I do is I, I sell this kit here, okay, and it's just like this. It's a little, um, it's an audio genius kit, because you're a genius if you buy this thing. Okay, um, uh, and here we go, here's a complete kit. Okay, and here's what you get, like here's one example of, of one, there, those are, you can see they're filled with that black material. Um, and then really, you actually, these these were, you only get one of each of these. That was um, loaded wrong. But um, so this is the basic kit for forty nine bucks. You get two of the jump of the uh, fuses that are bypasses, and then two of the of the jumpers. These are ten gauge uh, silver plated copper stranded. And you just take those and you pull the end plugs off. Put this maybe in the middle, and then horseshoe them and stick them right here, just like this is. Okay, it's going to sound so much different and so much more clear and open. And then. Um, the other, I, I'm, I've got more on the, on the way, the, this is pure silver. This is just, this is a, a half round that I was playing with, but what, but what you get is you get a 10 gauge full round piece that I've just changed to. I made these half round because I thought it would be cool for the set screw to set right into a flat piece and then push that, that, that half round right into the, you know, cylinder of this. Um, and it, and it was pretty cool, but the thing is, and nobody complained, but I don't know if everybody's screws come in at this angle some of these could come in at the top some of them could come down here and then really they're going to be bumming out because it's not going to be angled the right way and i had to i had to, I had to bend these the perfect way each time i sent out a kit so it's, it's um i figure it's better to just do it round and then it'll work for everybody perfectly every time so um this is for the upgraded pure silver jumper kit so you get two pure silver jumpers instead of two of the silver plate you i, I, I send these two you, in addition to these two, you get two of the pure silvers. They're nice. They're smoother, actually, than the silver-plated copper. Um, and um, and and so you'd get another one here, okay? Another another um, of the silver, okay? So you, you you just do that. Now you've seen if you've looked on, around a MagnaPan mods. If you just search Maggie mods, one of the most common mods is to bypass this, but they do it on the back. So you go back here and you move the wiring around and you bypass it this way. It's just I know that there's a bunch of people out there that don't want to mess with that kind of thing. And this involves no tool. Well, this little set screw thing, driver. But, you know, you can just click it in. You don't have to rewire. You don't have to do anything other than that. It's super easy. And it's it's 90% as good as removing this whole apparatus. Um, so this is important, in, in my opinion, for a Maggie to sound its best is to get rid of this whole 
um, apparatus and get it out of there. Um, you can do uh, 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 by doing a, just a kit like I showed you here. It's it has it's like ninety five percent of the same as, as removing the whole this whole thing. Um, and this is a lot more hard. This is for a DIY person that knows electronics, knows what they're doing. This is for like your mom can do it, you know. So um, uh, what you talking about, my mama? Um, anyways, so that is that. Uh, for the Maggie kit now, okay. Once you do that, okay, you've got your, you've got your, um, and I'm sure this, I don't, I can't even tell if this is pointed at me or not. Um, uh, um, what was I gonna say? You, well, the next thing, okay, to make the Maggie the bomb, okay, because you can look, you can take MMGs, which I talked about earlier on on a, a video. You can take MMGs, and I'm not kidding you. You put a good amp with those things. The reason I say MMG is because they're like the cheapest ones for sale on the resale market, okay? Um, it, you know, otherwise, any of them will work. They're, they're almost, the 0.7 is phenomenal. I've got one inside. I love those. Um, what was the MG12, I think, was something um, that we had at, at one point. But anyways, any of those, little guys. Um, okay, you add a couple, you add a pair of subwoofers, okay? You want two of them, okay? People say, well, you know, sub is only mono and doesn't have, you know, at a certain frequency, you're not going to hear left and right. I don't care. Um, I still put a left and a right sub because I know there's discrete information that goes to the left low and to the right low. Um, and so, um, you know, we're not, it's not home theater here. We're talking about music. So you can get yourself, now if you're at the MMG level, you know, you don't want to spend much, just go find some passive, or I mean some active subs that you can get that are like, they could be home theater subs, right? They could be just the kind that has a plate amp on there. You could get like little eight inch guys that are used, that are maybe like NHT or they're, um, man, little sub, uh, but was Bob Carver or true sub over. I don't know which ones sell at, at two, 200 bucks each or something like that, but trust me, you can find subwoofers that are active that are out there that are for like a hundred to two hundred dollars a piece. So get yourself a pair of those. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go around to the back of that sub and you're gonna turn that low pass and, and you're gonna let that uh um that subwoofer rip at about you can play with it. You can go, I mean, as high as 100 hertz if you want, uh, and then go down from there. Um, the higher you go, the more it's going to be recreating the same frequency as the MagnaPan, and, and the, 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 the more likely it is to cancel, have cancellations and weird, uh, weird errors and issues. So you kind of want to whatever you do in the sub you really don't want it to happen in the maggie um and and that's the next step up but the first step the easiest way to do the subs is just get a couple easy um plate amp subs plug them into the wall and then you just you're going to have to now have a way of getting a dual output out of your preamp so a lot of preamps have dual outputs you can use them both at the same time. You just ask your manufacturer. So it'll have maybe an XLR out and an RCA output on your preamp. If you do, um, great. Then you, you can you can use the XLR. Can go down or, or you know one goes down to the, which is huge because they don't make the dynamic bass that we all. Let me see. It's still rolling on this thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, they don't. I just felt the thing vibrate. Um, I'm holding it. Uh, okay. So they don't. Um, they don't make that dynamic low bass. They will make low bass for sure. You can feel it. You can you can well, you can hear it. Okay, and it's nice and it's tonally correct and everything like that. It just doesn't have punch. Okay, um, so we want to give it some punch so we can we can turn it up. Now, really, to do this the right way, um, you want to like I said earlier, not do. You want to make sure that the panel does not do any of those low frequencies because. It's a small panel first off, and to try and make it recreate low frequency, you're really asking it to do a lot. And it's taking up a lot of the resource to make that thing work at low uh, frequency. So if you take the job away from the panel of doing low frequency and you high pass the panel, the Maggie panel, in, in addition to low passing the sub, you also high pass your Maggie panel, you're going to remove that low bass from the, from the panel and man, wait till you hear those mids when you do that. It's going to like light those mids up and you leave the bass to the sub and your mids are going to be so much clearer all of a sudden. You're going to be like, oh, wow, check that out. And your subs are going to be booting the low stuff. And then at that point, you can do the same thing. You can you can go from, you know, 100 down. I crossed my, the ones that you saw in there, they're crossed over at 48 hertz. Okay, with a high steep crossover. Okay, because I don't want any of the um, I don't want any of the bass coming up into the panels. When I make my line, I want it to be a tight line. 
uh, uh, on, on, on the low frequency. So I use a 24 dB per octave um, slope, a Linkwitz Riley um, on my lows, on my, um, and um, do I use it both ways? Um, it definitely on the high pass I do, and, um, and on my low pass, yeah, I think they're both the same. They're both 24. Um, and, uh, and then you just vary it a little bit um, in terms of where you want your point to be crossed over. Now, in order to do that, that I just explained, you're going to need an active crossover, okay? So that is a little box that plugs into the wall, um, and it has electricity, you know, because it's, it's active. And, uh, and it will be a low pass. It'll be a two-way crossover, so it'll have an input, and then you'll have uh, two outputs of it, and, it, and it's going to be, you know, high and low. And so you're going to run your high over to the Maggie panel or, or to your amp that powers the Maggie panel because now you're going to need two amps. You're going to need, you're going to need two stereo amps or you're going to need four mono amps or you're going to need one four channel amp. Whatever it is, you need four channels now that you've done active crossover. But the cool part about this is that you are going to make the crossover, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to cut that frequency before the amplifier, which is way cooler than doing it after the amplifier. After the amplifier is wasteful. That means you're just filtering it off and just cutting it off and snubbing it out and it gets hot and it heats everything up because it's wasted energy, it turns into heat. If you do it this other way with the, with the active crossover, you're going to be changing the frequency before the amp and then that amplifier will only be amplifying the frequency that's necessary for that driver so nothing's wasted all, all the energy goes to its perfect spot uh, and, and it's utilized 100 percent okay it's much more efficient you will hear a difference when you do an active crossover that way and you take the lows out of the panels and you add that sub in there or the two subs now because you are adding a uh, um, you know you need those extra two channels at this point, you can just make yourself a sub, okay, with whatever subwoofer you want. Go to Parts Express, get a Dayton Audio uh, a, a subwoofer at 12 or something like that, and um, and then you can put any two-channel amp and, and, and power your sub. Just any any stereo amp, any mono amp, it's just like what you use for your regular rig. You can use that to power your subs, and you don't need to use some plate amp. I would look, trust I would always rather use an amp on the shelf or on a stand than a plate. Um, and you know plates can be good and that's fine. But no matter what, I don't like a plate as much as I like I don't I don't you know plates they're they're just kind of it's like for car woofer or something like that. I mean it's like it's for convenience. That's the reason why a plate amp exists because to make it convenient. So you can put it on the box of whatever you're building. So to me it's just like, you know, a bookshelf speaker. It's for it's for a reason that is not optimal. Because you have not optimal conditions, you must use this um, this solution for a not optimal, you know, uh, reason. So in, when, when I have the optimal situation, I don't want to use the not optimal solution for, uh, you know, for, for that. So, um, so even though right now I'm trusting in Danny Ritchie 100% um, because I don't want to use the damn plate amp, but I've figured Danny I'm just gonna trust him man he got he's got to know what he's doing and I trust him I'm gonna buy his plate amp and put it in and, and listen to it and it's good you know it is good but if I had my choice I wouldn't have a plate amp but they don't make this this the servo things in the you know amps that go on the shelf evidently so um so uh, so you're gonna get yourself an active crossover this is stage two where you really want to make these puppies sing you get yourself an active uh, an active crossover you can get it from phil marchand of marchand electronics i think he's got one there you can go um i'll tell you i'll i'll, I'll advise you which one to get phil marchand is probably your best bet i just went now and looked on ebay real quick to see what kind of two two-way crossovers they had and they have like these pro ones but the pro ones are weird because they have a high and a low and then they've got a sum like a subwoofer in the middle that's a single subwoofer and it, clearly it's pro audio and not hi-fi hi-fi would never they wouldn't sum to a single sub you'd have left and right subs all the time and so so you you really want something that's going to have a left and right low frequency adjust um and uh and 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 so i would recommend the marchand i'll look around a little bit more and see what i can come up with but um but just keep that in mind so um and you can find a crossover i think phil's is like 300 bucks you know and so the crossover is going to be maybe 300 dollars, and then whatever your second amp is is going to cost you so maybe you have one laying around you know uh, a stereo amp uh, for the subs 
Otherwise, you just go get one uh, and, and, and make a, 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 a high efficiency as you can with the sub uh, with the subwoofers. Um, uh, and so that, my friends, is how you dial the crap out of a MagnaPan MG, MMG. You take those, put an active on there, put four amp channels onto that that setup, uh, low pass the, 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 the sub, high pass the Maggie panels, and you're not going to believe what you get out of those little freaking $350 speakers. It's going to blow your mind. This is the part that I'm talking about when I say it's going to blow your mind. It's after the mod, okay? They're not going to blow your... I mean, they're with with without the mods you're going to understand and hear what the maggie imaging thing is all about and what it what a what a, um, a dipole is you're going to get what it sonically sounds like but you're not going to have the experience where you're like magic like oh my god this is incredible you will have that experience when you do your uh, tweeter bypass or, or the um, fuse bypass and when you do your um, active crossover and your four channels of amplification and your two subwoofers you are going to have, it's going to punch so much further than any of these $5,000 uh, Focal and CAF and all that crap that's out there at Best Buy or Magnolia or whatever. That stuff is mass-produced drack, okay? And it's never going to sound as good as a MagnaPan will when you, when you actively cross it over with dual subs um, and use four channels of, of good amplification. You're going to smoke... You're gonna, you won't trust me. You're not gonna believe it. You're gonna be like, oh my god, he was right. This is awesome. You gotta feel me now, believe me later, okay? Um, because, because I know what I'm talking about. I've done this a million times with these things, and that's why I say, if you guys buy the Maggie's uh, M M MMGs based on what I'm telling you right now, my recommendation, and you don't like them, and you're like, oh. These things aren't what Mikey said. I'll buy them from you, okay? As long as they're 350 they're not more than 350 because I know they're not worth more than that. So if they're $350 or less and they're in good condition, I'll buy them from you, man. I'll take as many as I can get because I'll just build them up into something and sell them off modded already, you know? I mean, they're too cool not to. I'll put a couple on my ceiling in here. I still haven't done the Maggie on the ceiling thing, and I know people do it. I'll do a Maggie on the ceiling thing in here and have it a whole... A whole I could... The other thing I want to do, I want to do with those timpanis in there, because they're three panels, I wanted to make a sound cubicle. Like, you know, like put it around me, put a chair in there, and, and like wrap those timpanis around me, man, and be right in the pocket of like, you know, complete, you know, sonic envelope. Um, so maybe I'll try that <laughs> someday. But I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to build those ones. Those look like they're a little old. And, and, and for somebody that has the patience, I've got too much damn things going on here to handle those right now. So anyways, I wanted to take this time to, t to tell you guys how to really make those Maggie sing because um, and I'm, not, I'm not sure everybody's aware of it. And, you know, people are saying, well, the Maggie's aren't that special. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's because you have not modded them yet. OK, that's right. They're not that special without the mod. They don't they just they don't sound anything. I mean, putting that fuse kit in, removing that, putting the bypass in instantly, it's going to be like taking cotton out of your ears. They're going to totally have another whole register of high frequency. They're going to go down. I mean, it's, trust me, when you put that in, it's going to be, you're going to be like, okay, now I can't, now I've see the window to like, whatever, the promised land. <laughs> but, um, so this is a fun experiment. Okay. And for all the, the people that get too serious out there, you know, this is something that, that I'm suggesting for you to broaden your audio horizons, right? This is to get you more educated by on, on your own, by your own, um, what do you say, hands-on experience. Because reading is BS um, to, 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 it's not practical application of anything. When you have practical application of something, you really get to know it, and it's much more meaningful in your learning process. Reading something is not is not doing something. Okay, you need to get out, and I'm I'm just suggesting you don't need, you don't need to do anything. Okay, right? But I'm just suggesting uh, that you try this because it will broaden. You you'll be a much more uh, seasoned listener, right? Um, a lot of the of, of you just you you. you well, you don't know where to begin, and I don't blame you, man. It's like, where do you get the information? Nobody wants to teach you. They just want to pretend that they're the keepers of all the information and sell you stuff, and then they're never going to give you the information. You just buy from them, and that's how it's... And well, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'll give you the choice. I'll show you how to build it yourself. You can buy it from me if you want to, but um, you don't have to, you know? Um, so 
nonetheless, um, um, this is, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you, oh, there's no other way to listen but this Magnapan thing, or, or that everything else sucks, or whatever. Um, if I say something like that, clearly, like when I said about the bookshelves, all bookshelves are junk. Okay, clearly, that can't be a real statement. Okay, clearly, I'm kidding. Clearly, that's tongue in cheek. Okay, how could I possibly say all of them are junk? Okay, it would be impossible. I haven't listened to all of them. Okay, so it's just like use common sense. Mikey's probably not serious about that because it's too freaking preposterous. Okay, well, I do preposterous on purpose. Okay, it's for a reason because the people that need to hear the message are going to come running. Okay, and so just realize that, okay? I'm here for the people, man. I'm not here because I think I'm great and I know the best and I know all the best ways of everything. That's BS. There is no best way of everything. We all know this is a subjective hobby. I could like something that is total dog crap to the next guy. It doesn't matter. If I'm enjoying my dog crap and I'm happy, that's what's important. That's the same with you guys. You want to be happy. I talk to all too many people that have spent a lot of money and they're not happy. They're like, what the... (laughs) What the hell, man? I just bought these thirty-five thousand dollars speakers. I bought this eighteen thousand dollars sub. I and you know, and it, it's it, it, somebody suggested it to me, and 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 it's weak. There's no man. I hear your thing on YouTube, and it's ten times better than the Sonic I'm getting over here. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, I can show you how to do that for a lot less. Okay, I'm showing you guys how to do it right now, the most efficient, least expensive way I know how, which is with Magnapan MMGs. I'm telling you, when you finish this, if you decide to do this and you do Magnapan MMGs, you put the fuse bypass in, you get yourself two subwoofers, four channels of amplification, and an active crossover, you you're you're going to be hitting at the at the level of $10,000 speakers, not even 5. Go 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 to 10. Focal Sopris, you'll probably kick their ass, okay? It's like, um, I'm not kidding, man. I mean, this is going to punch way higher than you expect. I've been doing this, I've done it a million times, and everybody freaks out. I had, I did a demo with, I think I told you this, with the MMGs and the subs like I had. And a, this is a guy who has 20.1s, and he, he's like, my, that is the best Magnapan demo I've ever had in my life. I can't believe that. You know, we were playing Sabbath at full tilt, boogie, you know. Um, So anyways, okay, enough. Um, That's my message, okay, to you guys. Teach you something, and you can can do it if you want to or not. But um, I'm telling you, if you go along for the ride, if all you've had is little bookshelf speakers, and you just had kind of dum-dum stuff so far, and nothing really really that's the real deal, this is going to be your first taste of the real deal. These Maggies, the way I told you to do it, This is your first taste of the real hi-fi, okay? Because there's real hi-fi, and then there's the BS fluff hi-fi, okay? Y'all know, and you'll, as you listen to me, you'll get more and more familiar with which is which, how to decipher from the BS hi-fi that's masquerading as hi-fi, and then the real, the real stuff, okay? I know the real stuff. I've spent my whole career finding out what is the real stuff, and it's not expensive, all of it, okay? You can buy the expensive stuff if you want, but I know how to do it on, on, on pennies, okay? Because there, the, the equipment doesn't get any worse. If you've got something from 30 years ago that was kick-ass 30 years ago, an amplifier, for instance, it's still kick-ass. That has not changed, okay? It, it, there has been not much that's changed in amplifier technology. In fact, if it's a class A or a class A, if it's a class A, it's definitely not different than the ones from back then. Um, the only things that are new and different are the class Ds. Um, so anyways, um, that's that. I wanted to give you that little message. And so you can you go on your merry way and, uh, and uh, start your little path down the rabbit hole. So I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.